My name is Rhapsody, welcome back to Vault of the Void. We're going to be continuing with a hard run, because we did not succeed at our previous hard run attempt at the uh, corruption deck of the Door of the Void. Now, we took Blade, I believe, in the introduction with the Hidden, so we're going to try and cycle around to the ones that we haven't shown off yet, so the first for each of the characters. <laughs> the Hidden's Blade deck, uh, sorry, Bleed deck, rather has draw blood, inflict five damage, inflict an additional three if the target is bleeding. It's also a swift attack. Uh, the upgrade is six and five on those damage stats. Then we have parry, ability, block hidden. It's just five to eight. Then for the throat. <clears throat> this is also swift and is an attack, which is important uh, because only swift attacks get enhanced by combo. Uh, it is five to eight bleed on the upgrade. And then from shadow, apply bleed three, block eight, and the upgrade is taking that to 5 and 12. We have the starting spell of Backstab. Target creature suffers 3 bleed. If the target is currently planning on an attack action, they suffer 5 bleed and 1 weak instead. And the starting artifact is Sneak Artist, which we've seen before. The ability to, uh, based on the amount of empty squares you've gone to. Oh, this is a great start! Oh my god! From Shadow, Nick bleed it out and Sanguine Shell. Also, Slight in Hand here. Uh, when a card is dispelled or is... Uh, sorry, discarded or expelled, inflict three damage from a random creature. Sanguine Shell is block 20, trigger all bleed, upgrades to have literally, yeah, the exact same, except you can also purge it for five block. Bleed it out is trigger a target's bleed, purge on the upgrade gets added as well, apply two bleed to all creatures. Then Sleight of Hand, Nick is inflict five bleed, draw one. It's a swift card, however, it's a ability. Not an attack, so it will not get enhanced or triggered multiple times thereover uh, by combo, important to note. And then from Shadow, we've seen before. I was going to put some music in the background. I'm going to take a quickness here. Um, I was going to put some music in the background, uh, some just royalty-free music that I managed to find online. However, uh, my internet's currently out. Um, I've been having a couple of internet problems over the course of the last week. You might have seen that on Monday last week, the videos were missing, literally just because I could not upload them, had no access to the internet most of that day. Uh, and we've since identified the problem, but it's not yet going to be fixed. So I, I guess I hope that this video goes up tonight. It's entirely possible it can't because the internet doesn't come back. Ugh. But that's not the case. Uh, the Void chooses their Guardians and signs their Blessings. So we have the possibility of the Blessing of when fighting the Void, you'll have six delayed block at the start of each turn. When fighting the Void, the first two cards played will trigger plus one times. Not each turn, but the first two cards played. So buffs are going to be really, really interesting in the Void fight, possibly. You also have, uh, that is to say, rigged buffs. The cards that you put on top of your deck that are of the green casting type, the buff casting type. We also have the Blessing of Quick Step during the Void fight, each time you purchase a card block three, and then Blessing of Rage each time the Voids casts Fury, gain 100% Rage the following turn. I'll clean this place if it's evil. And I'm probably going to take a random Void Stone here. Ooh, we started with a black Void Stone. Give me another. Ah! <clears throat> I mean, yay. We have two black Void Stones to start here. That is wild. I don't know what I want to put them on yet because I haven't got the right cards in deck. Uh, let's cut that as well. Put the Nick in instead and then put another from Shadow. Bleed it out's pretty good, but only after I upgrade it. Quickness is fine. I'll drop a parry for a quickness, I think, then. Okay. Let's have a look at some of our path. Apply three bleed to all creatures. Upgrades to fine bleed to all creatures. It is an ability as well. Then we have Bide. Oh, I really do like Abide. Block 16, combo 2. Upgrades to block 22, combo 2. It is a 3 cost, but we might be able to find some extra energy in here somewhere. The sidestep, kneecaps, 1,000 cuts. Uh, it's just a 2 cost. Bleed 9, upgrades to 13. There's another quickness down here. I like that. We could get two quicknesses, upgrade each of them, and then have both of those quicknesses with uh, black void stones on them. Uh, which literally just means like, you know, two cards in the deck that for zero cost give me two extra combo. That is huge. Consider that Bide has, is three cost, gives you two combo and 22 block, but costs three. Two combo is pretty good. Oh, there's a natural 20 here as well. Apply vulnerable four to all creatures. Vulnerable does actually modify the damage that you deal with bleed as well. So... I'm actually pretty interested in getting that. 
Hmm. Okay, what could I do? Okay, I could go Blade Storm side. So I could go da 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 da. Concentrate. Concentrate used to be good. Now it's okay. Maybe I'm too harsh against it, but it used to be gain two energy upgrades to four. Then it was gain two energy upgrades to three. Now it's gain two energy upgrades to gain two energy and overcharge. Uh, and because it costs you an energy to play, this is a positive of one energy and one overcharge. Usually I just want a different card in hand because like purging a card without playing it, that's also one energy positive, right? So literally the benefit of playing this over purging it is literally just gain overcharge and possibly whatever gem you have inst uh, installed into it, which seems seems low, seems low to me. So I, I, like maybe if you have a plan for how you're gonna play it. I mean, obviously we have black void stones. So black void stones could significantly alter the, the value of that. We'll see. I think this is gonna be our opening path. We're gonna ignore that bind. Okay, um, is there anything I need to do the deck beforehand? No. We also get two upgrade spaces here, which is really handy because I can upgrade my actual, uh, the quickness. Okay. That sets up vulnerability, then that kills. This is a three turn cooldown. Yeah, fine. I'll lower the amount of incoming damage. Okay. Hmm. If I quickness, I can use draw blood to kill one. So sure. Then we use from shadow to set that up. Okay, next turn you're dead. That is to say, after their attack next turn. So maybe I still want to put some extra damage on them. Maybe if we had an extra attack card. Also, the enemy was buffing that turn, so it really wasn't going to matter. <sighs> there are so many cards in the deck that I desperately want to... <sighs> Look, Quickness needs to be upgraded so that I can actually put the black gem in it and not feel bad. Go over to the side step as well. Block X. X is equal to your current energy times two. Upgrades to also gain one energy and do that. So this is also one energy positive in the same way that concentrate is one energy positive. But this gives you block for you know anywhere between six and fifteen, six and sixteen, really depending on the way that you run your deck. Oh god, a black void stone on this after it's uh, after it's upgraded actually seems also really good. We may end up doing that. Okay. Got him on turn one. With vulnerability, it's a bit easier to do that. Okay. I've also turned on fast mode. In a three hour episode, I think it's time to turn on fast mode, you know? Uh, okay, that's ready to kill on you. Easy. There are so many things that I desperately need to upgrade so I can put in the deck, like bleed it. Do I really need bleed it down in the deck? Trigger targets bleed. I'm not really stacking their bleed very high yet. It's entirely possible that I do pivot into just stacking bleed very high, like upgrade both from shadows, uh, upgrade the Nick. Probably not fall the throat. We'll probably replace that with something else. Or right, upgrade the uh, Sanguine Shell as well. Currently we're using like actual attacks rather than poison, uh, rather than poison, rather than bleed to actually end the fights. Besides that wants to upgrade badly, doesn't it? So does Bladestorm though. Yeah, screw it. You get sidestep. I'm going to drop a parry, put the sidestep in the deck. I'm also going to give this sidestep a socket. And you know what? I'm also going to include blade storm, cut a draw blood. And then I'm probably going to include a bleed it out as soon as I can as well. 
Thousand cards. Wait, we can't go up and then down, right? Because we'd have the path there. Me cap supply weak. Upgrade supply four weak. Oh, four weak can be pretty important in final fights. No, if we want to go for a bleed heavy deck, then we go for the thousand cuts here. And we have enough things in the base deck that make a bleed heavy deck pretty good. Let's go for it. Oh, it's a treasure goblin. Okay, so uh, because the treasure goblin doesn't attack, I'm going to cut all of my parries here. And then just put in draw blood. I guess I'll pat it back out with parries. I'm trying to make more usage of changing my stuff before the fights. Yeah. There we go. Just use that for two extra energy. Bleed you. Bleed you again. You'll... Oh, sorry. Uh, just in case I haven't read this before, you'll gain five essence for each point of damage this creature suffers. Wow. Karen Fear. Gain fortitude equal to 5% of his max HP. Okay, let's hang on. So I'm gonna I'm gonna deal eight damage to you. Four of it goes through your fortitude, four of it does not. Okay, and I only got 20 extra essence. Five essence for each point. So yeah, only four points went through. So letting the enemy stand here and keep getting fortitude so you can keep hitting them in order to benefit more from the loose backpack is not a strat. That's just what I was confirming there. Treasure has an upgrade point. Great. The Nick looks pretty good here. I'll happily take that. And then we have Sanguine Shell. Right. I'm going to take the Thousand Cuts, I think. That's fine. Gonna need to pass through that mob room. Something extra. All swift attack cards played will also deal one bleed. So this would be if I actually wanted to leave all of the draw bloods into the deck, but I actually think I'm gonna move far away from them. I'm probably gonna end up with a deck that's very heavy in abilities and very light in much else. Into NG, something extra. Battle plan, not really interesting to me. Bleed it out, no, could be. Um, cursed item over there. Gain one energy for each bleeding enemy. Upgrades to block six as well as do that. I have AoE bleeds. I have a couple of AoE bleeds in the deck, actually, so that's that's not bad. Oftentimes, that will be gain three energy for the cost of one energy, but it also gives a six block. And then also has the gem slot in it as well. So it's two energy positive compared to the one energy positive from Concentrate. At least in the single turn, obviously, this gives you overcharge. Um, enough suffering. Expel all weakness. Heal for and expel itself. That gives us the ability to do some really interesting things here. We could actually go like all the way down this path, down to there. So like, da, 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 da. and then take the soul collector up across, get a void here, up across, get more voids here, then go down to... This elite getting enough suffering and use the enough suffering so that the voids don't actually matter to me because I can just have a green void stone on the enough suffering put into my opening hands. And it's a heal four. That's not bad. <laughs> In fact, it might be even good. Uh, ghostly Piranha. We got our quickness as a result of this. I, I think quickness was a bad upgrade for me now. I Because I pivoted away from the deck that it was going to support. That's I shouldn't have upgraded it as early as I did. It just wasn't necessary at that time, I don't think. I'm going to save this side step for the start of the next turn.
Mm -hmm. There we go, up to all the energy we could want. Then I will... Kill you. Right, bleed on this target two times over. Ouch. That's dead at the end of the next turn. Uh, annoying. Wow, we drew very early on most of our defensive cards there, apparently. Yikes. Thankfully we have lethal here because that could have gone real sideways. Natural 20, great pickup as well. Because it affects bleed, it still works in this deck. Uh, however, this is a single target fight. Also, I, I'd never put my defense back in the deck. That might explain why I have no defense in this deck. Oops. Um... But this is a single target fight, so we might not really care about... The... Bladestorm? Like, yeah, I'll put the Fall of the Throat in instead, but it's, it's very minor. Alright, Quelpling. Hmm. Fine, let's get swift about it all. Do need to purge a couple of cards so I can try and control this burning as much as possible. Okay, I just not got to discard. Probably draw blood. Don't like that I managed to take damage here. We've got a blue void stone coming up. Okay, that's, that, that'd be pretty good, especially on the Nick. Also, I think it's pretty likely we get to conclude this fight without having to use the hero power again. Spell, sorry. Is I'm not 20, as well as two souls. What's the likelihood we end up with enough souls by the time we get to the collector? I was feeling more and more of a distant kind of thing. A thousand cuts is already pre upgraded. That was supposed to be in the deck already. Cool. Oh, and then this Nick actually is a replacement for that as well. Nice. It looks like we're trending this deck defensive. We're actually trending it offensive. Offensive, rather, sorry. Um, Obsidian Crown, every eighth ability card would be played with zero energy. <laughs> it seems great. Um, hmm. Yeah, let's apply as much bleed as we can with that. Bruce. It's immunable to... Immune to vulnerable. Okay, that makes sense. Accidentally wasted the natural 20 there then. Our next ability costs zero. So we should keep in mind, play an expensive ability first if we have one. <laughs> I mean, trigger all bleed. Might as well, right? Okay, we at least got some defense that turn. I'm happy about that. Discard both defense and just absolutely go for it. Okay, we've got a kill.
Okay, we also picked up the blue void stone that I was just talking about prior. I think that goes in a nick. Draw two, discard one. It'll make it a lot more useful in terms of controlling weaknesses that we might have put in the deck at uh, some point. And here we'll take the Folder Throat out and put the Blade Stone back in because we're going back to AoE fights. Thinning out, expel two cards from your deck. Expel. Upgrades to be zero cost and do that. Interesting. I still need all these extra fights. Even if I don't necessarily think I want the rewards. Just so they can get more souls and more essence for later. Honorable, that's 20 attack attack. Now you are, yes, for every four cards I play in a turn, the creature gets one AP. So I'm just gonna purge these two and then we're fine. Played three cards that turn. I'm gonna leave the sidestep in here for the next turn and instead play one, two, three. There's our full block. We get to play one more card if we don't want to buff the enemy. I think we're beyond that. I think we're now buffing enemies. And that's why I think that. Fourteen. Let's look at the map again. Probably get some in here at least. Mm, it feels like we're probably not going to get enough uh, souls to get a really, really rare relic. So we'll find fight for us. I mean, getting one of them down. It's our priority, right? Do you see him coming damage at least? Okay. Left is already dead then. Middle's getting closer. Huh? What? Pray, clear all negative debuffs. And that happens before the poison goes off. Wow. Wow. I got rumbled. I got absolutely rumbled. Well done. You yeah, got me, sisters. This one should be pretty simple now. Uh, nice. So I'll put the merchant. Each time bleed triggers, it will increase by two. Upgrades to become rigged and one cost. I like that. Volta Blades, add one Volta Blade to your hand at the start of each turn, upgrades to two, this is all hidden blades, trigger one extra time. I'd love both of those. Oh my god, I would love to set up a deck with just those. Uh, backpedal is deal three damage, sift and rebound, upgrades to... Okay, rebound is nice, give you the ability to use it twice, The uh, specifically the, the Void Stone in it, that is. Wounded for vulnerability, but it's two cost. Time to main can also be pretty good. Stack up a lot of rage. The only thing is the rage is about, yeah, attack cards dealing more damage. That's probably not going to be relevant to us. I'm going to take the lacerations, specifically the pre-upgraded lacerations. Cut a parry from the deck and put that in. It's rigged, right? This one's rigged. Yeah. So because that's rigged, we can easily give it something like a, oh, I don't know, black void stone in order to get two copies of that buff out at the very start. 
And in longer fights, which I'm going to kind of try and aim for things to be, uh, that should really, really pay dividend for us. Whew. Well, good thing we have sandwich gel here. Incoming, oh, incoming damage. Yikes, that is a lot of damage. That helps. It's a card, it's a card. Uh, it's probably that one. Taking that all the way down to three incoming damage, I feel pretty good about. Okay, the incoming block, uh, we already have 13, so yeah, I mean, we're good. Two things that out there as well. And then we've got one kill already going off this turn. And with any luck, we'll be able to draw immediately into that kill. Hmm. Block five upgrades to block eight, apply weak two to all bleeding targets. There's also gain one energy for the next three swift cards played. Expel, upgrades to no longer expel. I'm cutting out swift cards at this point. Well, am I? Next three swift cards played. Not ne not the next three swift cards played this turn. Next three swift cards played. So that means that Nick is also that. Nick is another one. Man, Nick's the only one that's ultimately going to be staying in the deck for that long, right? Dueling Buckler. No, we're moving away from Swift as well, so. Guess I'll take an Anemia. Uh, 19... Yeah, it's 22. Your hand size Your hand size increased by one is so powerful. I am very sad I can't get that. Also can't afford the green void stone here. There is, if you are below 35% HP at the start of the turn, uh, play slow one to all enemies. When playing a balanced card at zero combo four block. Yeah, don't want that either. I'm gonna take the random. The start of each fight, heal five. Okay. Thank you. As long as we can get the Jinx Leprechaun down as soon as possible. Why on the first turn did it try to heal? Oh, right, yeah. Well, I guess it did that in response to my attacks against it. So yeah, that makes sense. Um, I mean, I don't really want a thousand cuts there. It looks like we get the kill with the Blade Storm already. Or not. Now we've got the kill. I think Hex Sanguine Shell shows up on all these turns that we're doing badly, eh? It really does feel like it shows up specifically. Four more, and then we get our kill. Surely, right? Mm. 
Yeah, so I take the damage, the enemy attacks, and then they... Okay, cool. I, I let that one happen uh, regardless. I, I mean, like, it was going to happen anyway at that point, but I was fine with it happening because I did want to see exactly how it was going to respond. Get the Sanguine Shell so I can get more block because we can already see that's a problem. Or all negative conditions by one for each leftover energy at the end of the turn. We don't really leave energy left over at the end of the turn, but it's not impossible. Gain one energy per bleeding enemy, of course. Go to this. Give him some slacerations. I'm also trying to spread the bleed a little bit here just because I have the lacerations, so they're going to be increasing their bleed after the hits anyway. Okay. Next ability card is free. Sanguine shell, sanguine shell, sanguine shell, sanguine shell, sanguine shell, sanguine shell, sanguine shell. Sanguine shell. Got him. I'm not going to attack against the Cinderhal yet because it has Ignite. It'll deal three damage to me whenever it's the target of an attack. So I might actually be able to get away without attacking it. Just keep casting poisons. A dark visitor capable of cloning our cards. Hmm. I mean, we could clone a card with a, uh, a gem in it. Like, Sidestep is really good here to clone, I think. Oh god, it's actually really, really good. It's upgraded, it's got a gem in it, it's, it's just, it's free energy and defense. It's actually, that's really good. I could use seven souls to dupe it instead of playing with the voids, but I'm gonna pay with a void. Go down here to the enough suffering. It'll increase the frenzy, can remove debuffs, but won't attack whilst doing so. That is one thing. I am a bleed deck. Am I gonna run into an enemy who's like, <laughs> nice try trying to bleed me, nerd? Am I gonna run into that? Take the band of resilience here because doubling the effect of the from shadows and such seems like a really good uh, really good impact we could have power of the void removes all debuffs and gains plus one ap so it's just gonna remove its bleed yeah well 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 well, well, well. i think we found the reason that we want some non-bleed things available in our toolkit. Okay. Again, next skill's free. Love that Sanguine Shell keeps becoming that skill specifically. Thankfully, the enemy's not purging theirs this turn. So we can still get damage in on the turns it's available. So if one confusion, will attack with Frenzy 1, so we only take 6 damage this turn anyway. Um, let's get for the draw discard, get rid of the Blade Storm. It's really hoping for significantly more defense that turn. We do have a Void Stone Bar still incoming. He's attacking again. Weren't you supposed to clear your debuffs at some point? Why don't you go do that? Huh? Stop messing with me. I mean, you're dead at the end of the turn. I just need to defend as best I can. Also, just to increment the Obsidian Crown while I can. Don't need to do that. Okay. 
Which of these do we really want to affect? Might be not. Oh, I didn't put the sick. <laughs> I took it. I just didn't put it in there. Rig that card as well. All right. Fairly one round of fights. Uh, the ability to inflict fear, killing his minions, will heal the king himself. Oh, it's about to increase his AP by six this time. Um, start out with enough suffering. Yay, it worked. Then lacerations. We'll start the bleeds accordingly. I think it's quite likely we end up going for the skeleton king the entire time here. Sixth block card triggers an additional time. Okay, hopefully we've... Hopefully we find a From Shadows. Immediately finds both From Shadows. Uh, gonna love it. Weaken the enemy further or make him more vulnerable. Maybe I actually don't care about Swift, so it'll make you more vulnerable and then also do that. Or uh, make you bleed more and then also make you more vulnerable. The enemy's damage is very high. Okay, I have a very good way of dealing with all that. It feels like I want another copy of that same card again though. Do that two times for the extra bleed. Okay. I'm gonna leave the Sanguine Shell in hand for the next turn. Send out another bleed, natural 20, and then just double quickness for the extra swift. Okay, 24 incoming. We've got, ooh, sidestep, great. First draw blood, sidestep, sidestep, Sanguine. Whew. Two upgrade points. There are so many cards in this deck that still want to be upgraded. Obviously, both from Shadows desperately want to be upgraded. So does the Natural 20 as well, though. Uh, there's also the Scent of Blood and both Bleeded Out. Nemia. I am lacking Weaken for my enemies right now. So why not take Scent of Blood and Nemia? We're hard upgrading these two parries. Shield wall. Block 15, block an additional one for each ability played this turn. Thinning out. Okay, don't really care about either of those. There's Sanguine Shell down there. Pretty good. Could go... To, 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 uh, bleed out. Okay, so we're almost certainly doing those. Nemia, Tower Shield, minimum cost over there. I wouldn't be entirely surprised to do something like that. So I can get both of these elites, but the thing is, oh, Crimson Soul is so good there as well. I can get both of these elites, but I really want to go to that shrine for the double removal of my uh, weaknesses right now, because then I can sub the enough suffering back out of the deck. All I know is this is my path right now, so let's start doing that. Pyamite. Do I have any additions or subtractions I want to make from the deck for this? Not that I think I know enough about the game yet to account for. Next block card triggers two times, so. Oh, no, 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 next block card. Is, yeah, it's just free. It doesn't trigger two times, so it's fine. Next one triggers two times.
At least we get the side steps, yeah? Pyre. It's got so much damage. Or rather, the, the Pyre Mites are doing so much damage because of the uh, the burn that keeps being put on me. Um, we definitely double quickness here, easily. Then Nick, and then the From Shadow. Ooh, and Mimi is also zero cost right now. I like that. Yeah, get everyone weak. Very handy. Okay, the Pyre is now dead at the end of this turn, and we're starting to control the burns a little bit more as well. Yikes. I say trying to control them a bit more, but still, yikes. Expel all weakness, expel, purge one rigged. Hell of a lot of incoming damage, eh? Sadly, nothing I can do about it right now. Literally, I just needed to purge more cards in earlier turns. Okay. Next one triggers additional times. We'll do a Sanguine Shell and then just, like, collect our kill. Took us a lot of HP, but we managed to get out of it at least. No hidden room. Veiled Watcher. They become stronger as I draw out weakness cards, but they, uh, which they can give me themselves. They can also become vengeful if I kill one and don't follow up on it. Wow. I just drew a void on turn one. Ugh. Just buffed everyone immediately. It's 100% per- No, it's 60% per- Okay, so I shouldn't just hard focus one- Hey! That's my sidestep! Expel a random card from your deck or discard and replace it with two banes. Oh, that's actually really drastic then. Oh, that's way worse than I thought it was. Excuse me, what? Had to mute there for a second for a sneeze. Okay, uh, I like Bladestorm and Nemia here. Get the weakness out on everyone. Twenty-six. Okay, you're dead after this turn, then. Just gonna discard. Might as well discard the from Shadow because I don't have the ability not to. Or rather, wouldn't have had the ability to play it. Sure, let's gain energy and then use that energy to gain defense. Got 10 incoming damage this turn. We're going to kill our first. I used to say, like, hard kill, like, actually remove from the board. Next block card triggers two times. We know that we still have Sanguine left in that deck. There it is. <laughs> 90 incoming damage next turn. Yikes. Fine. Trigger that one twice, though. How'd that not kill that, that Watcher? Hey? I guess they're dead now. Hopefully we get the kill right here. Okay, uh... I just draw into it. That was about to be very scary. Do I really want another Sanguine Shell in the deck? 
I like the prompt shadows, certainly. Trigger target's bleed. We want to bleed it down in the deck now, I think. We also have the next Black Void Stone that could easily go on Lacerations, which seems the most obvious for it. And in fact, it will be exactly where I end up putting it then. I also need to find more ways to defend. It may even just be put like a yellow void stone on. In fact, I'm gonna put a yellow void stone in Anemia. Anemia feels like it blocks for too little, but I really do like the weakness. I really do like and lack, in fact, the weakness. High spike damage, some creatures hitting with high frenzy whilst others hit with IAP. Uh, Kill Aurora is very important here. Enough suffering here. Yeah, two times. Uh, you're already weak as. I guess I'll throw that one out to you, and then I'm gonna double purge as well. Even try and get some extra energy. Okay. Got thousand cuts. Thousand cuts sent to blood. We've got the sanguine shell. I could cast afterwards as well. Um. Okay, I'm not near duping any of my next attacks, unfortunately. Yeah, so we're definitely playing the Sanguine Shell as well. Okay, so it's that. That. Still have to play the Sanguine Shell? Yeah. I'm actually going to purge another. So we've got lower all negative conditions by one for each leftover energy at the end of the turn. This should lower all of my poison. Yeah, good. I probably could have used that to help get rid of the burn. Actually, yeah, I, I definitely should have focused on using that to get rid of the burn in that fight. Seems like the most impactful way I could have handled it. Okay, we'll make everyone bleed one and then sidestep. Draw blood on the priest. Yeah, it guarantees the kill by the end of this turn. And we'll sidestep Nick. Yeah, sure, double quickness as well. Fine. So we got the incoming 26. What's the... Okay, we got a sidestep in the deck. We'll be fine. Sidestep is hard carrying for us right now. It, almost every single time we draw it, it is plus 20 block, if not, you know, plus 16. Um, plus 16 no, plus 18. Uh, as well as two extra energy for a cost of a single card. It's... <laughs> like it's it's overperforming kind of ridiculously. Okay. Bleed it out is trigger target creatures bleed. I don't even know. Uh I mean I, I definitely want to weaken him. Yeah, let's weaken them both. Eighth ability cost zero. I'm sure we'll target that one in you and then we'll bleed you then. Making sure we get the kill this turn. And lining us up for the possibility of doing it again. That'll do it. Shouldn't have played that first one. I should have left it. The Obsidian Crown and such. I've, I've got to make sure that I leave those on the right part. Um, it really is like I want it, I want the increased block and I want the increased bleed. It's literally just like upgrade the From Shadows and such now. To me at least. Okay, it's the Night Fight again. I don't have a healing potion. If I had one, I would use it here. Wow. Garbage opening turn. Just purge my whole hand immediately. Ugh. Feels bad. We 
triggered that one twice, and then we'll trigger this one twice for, or well, once for extra energy. I'm gonna make you vulnerable. And capitalize on the damage. 30 incoming this turn. I've got no energy going forwards as well, so sidesteps are significantly less powerful. Yeah, there's one. Okay, at least we get the knight down this turn. I mean, this is faster than we got them down last time. Just whether or not we also draw... Okay, yeah. We did. <laughs> whether or not we also draw enough defense to make this reasonable here as well. We did. Uh, triggers an additional time, sure. We can all four. Uh, get extra energy. There we go. Okay, the assassin is now also dead. Uh, we can sidestep from shadow and then, I believe, just go straight for these kills. I'm pretty sure, yeah, priest doesn't attack. Priest is love another fighter. Great. The other from shadow, we already had that kind of like hard locked in. Crimson slaughter trigger or bleed stacks. This is. All creatures with bleed suffer two vulnerable and then trigger all stacks. This might be able to replace the natural 20 we have in the deck. <laughs> I think it's quite likely it does. Uh, it is very late for us to pick up a Dwarven Beard not here. Fractal Feather, each time you play a card with the same name as a card you played this turn, block three. I don't know, if a card triggers multiple times, does it count as playing another card? No, it doesn't count as playing another card. Probably not, at least. Um... So what? Sidestep, sides... Any of my things with a ghost gem in them benefit from this? Three block. It's probably Cake of Lucky Rum, though. Again. A 22-card deck. Only four cards... Uh, actually, only three cards can be in my opening hand. And two times in a row, out of the 20 available choices, it shows two voids. Well done, game. I mean, look, you got me. You, you absolutely got me. You rumbled me something fierce. Uh, triggers an additional time, eh? Let's start with the Nick. Okay. Double anemia, a bunch of weak on you. I think that might end up actually being relevant. Then just increment my counters with that. Uh, yeah, should have done that in our order. Forgot that she actually just inflicts things on you in response. Okay, so the first card we play here is just going to be lost. Play that instead then, I guess. Uh, we'll... So I'm going to sidestep so I can play one. Sidestep to get more energy and then just keep the other in hand. I, I, don't, I don't need to worry here. Just keep keep blocking. If we just keep on keeping on. We should be fine. And the next turn, they're dead. Hey, if not before that. Okay, never mind. And the next time they're dead. <laughs> we did get a health potion there. I'm very glad to see it. Hopefully we get an upgrade point here. Do not. Block five, apply bleed three to a random enemy rebound. That is... Great. This turn your threat stack won't trigger. Purge for delayed block three, upgrade suit delayed block six. No, we go for sustenance here. So it's sustenance, and then we want to slap a a red gem into it when we get the ability. 
God, Crimson Slaughter already wants to go in the deck. Heck, I think I probably also want the health potion right now. In Cold Blood. This is Swift as well. This is interesting. So we actually finally have a good Swift trigger. Because this is inflict 5 damage, trigger the target's bleed. It's a swift attack, so I can combo this up to 3 and then just trigger the target's bleed multiple times in the same turn. That actually seems really good. Oh my god, we, yeah, we... God, so I have to pass up the... Uh, it's fine, we can go to this in order to clear our voids later, I think. Okay, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Uh, Taxidermist. This can be a rough fight. We're pretty much set for it as best as we can in our deck right now, though. Literally, we just want the uh, the unknown suffering. The enough suffering, rather. So these uh, Unholy Creations, they have Frenzy equal to uh, one plus the number of cards that I have in hand. So I want to empty my hand at the end of each turn. And because this one's attacking, I'll be able to weaken it as well. Okay, so the eighth, yeah, next card is going to cost uh, zero. Let's just say the next ability card. I mean, Anemia is not a bad, not a bad play there then. Everyone gets mad weakened. Trigger Sanguine Shell twice here, get... You know what, yeah. That's a lot of bleed damage we just managed to do. And it also incremented their bleed as well because we triggered it, right? And triggering it increases it because of our lacerations. Uh, yeah, 72 incoming. It, the, the incoming in this fight is always so threatening. It always seems like you're just about to suddenly die. She just died. We'll get the extra one. Trigger targets bleed. Uh, I mean, twelve. Never mind. Significantly less than 12 now. <laughs> we found our way. This is when it gets bad, right? When you have a bunch of Banes that you can't discard at the end of the turn and the enemy just has a bunch of Frenzy. Thankfully, we managed to get pretty much everything we needed done significantly before that was a problem. And it looks like that's going to be, yeah, the trend line that continues. Next ability card. No, okay. It's going to wait so that I don't have to worry about missing out on any of our triggers later. There's important blood. Recur the top card. Not as important. At the, tarda, uh, sorry, at the start of every turn, discard one card and draw another. That's really good. Upgrades have come rigged. I'm going to the Soul Collector. Trusty Fishhook. At the start of your turn, gain two Volatile Hidden Blades. There's also gain an upgraded temporary version of the first card you purge in a fight. And leftover common. Sign's value will be set to the energy total of the cards in hand at the end of fight. Gain delayed block equal to that next fight. You know, the really frustrating thing here is I actually don't think the Trusty Fishhook is really worth it for us. Two Volatile Hidden Blades. I mean, they benefit from our combo. They don't use it. They deal some damage for us. They would synergize with uh, some of the cards that I've got in my backpack right now. In particular, the two something extras. I don't think that's a good reason to put two something extras into the deck, though. Like, four bleed a turn. They might just be worth it for the straight-up damage they provide, and in fact, I'll take them for exactly that reason. Hmm. Roll. 
damn it. Both of them got worse. <laughs> I was really hoping for an upgrade on just one of them at least. Uh, cursed item. No, I, I do want to go to the shrine and purge, so I'm not going to get any more curses. Deal four damage to all creatures, or seven if the target is bleeding. Upgrades to seven and 12. Remove all bleed from the target, gain that much block. Definitely not going to do that. Uh, we're getting very late in the game, so the final fights, I'm going to need all of that still there. Let's remove these two weaknesses. Having now removed those two weaknesses, we can get the In Cold Blood into the deck. What's that upgrade to? Slay transfer their bleed. God, I wish I really had the ability to upgrade that. Like, oh, oh, it'd be good. Uh, but we don't. So then we cut the... D -d 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 where are you? Center blood? Was it center? No, it's enough suffering. There we are. Deal 9 damage X times. X is equal to the target's frenzy value. Also, all alone. Um, all alone, I've been thinking about whether or not that has like a role to play possibly in a, in a void fight. Right, it's 48 damage for 2 energy against the void because obviously the void is always solo. But, 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 but. The void has like a couple thousand. So whether or not that's relevant... I don't know yet. I think I'm gonna pass up on everything else actually here. Let's go train a spell. Oh no, we're rerolling card. Cool. Uh, let's put a rare in here. Yeah, because then we get a high rare chance on the reroll. Transform it. <coughs> Sutan, this turn, all swift attack cards trigger plus one times. Mm, not gonna be super relevant to us. Crimson Slaughter is pretty good though. This creature and its minions can both buff each other, providing a constant choice in uh, regards to fight priority. I don't want to change my spell at all, do I? Total damage to target creature. If it kills them, heal five. No. Feel like there's something I'm forgetting here. Oh, oh double sidestep in the opening hand. Every attack card plays on the Blood Hive will increase all minions' AP by one. Well, uh, every attack card played against this creature will grant two Fortitude to the Blood Hive. Okay, Fortitude on the Blood Hive doesn't matter to me, so I just put Poison on the Blood Hive and I attack the other ones. Seems to be the way that we're going to be approaching this. I'm playing that for the extra energy it provides. Gonna need some energy. Okay. We then... Bleed you. That's the in cold blood I was looking for. Although I now can't attack the Blood Hive itself. I have no other things I can do here. Hmm, okay. Can I defend? Yeah, I can just defend with the Sanguine Shell here. Let's do that. I'm going to keep the, keep the side step around. This in cold blood could have been so good. So you've also got flesh fle uh, feast. Using all enemies gain three AP. Hmm. A natural tenny sidestep. Nick. 
Discard the second sidestep? I don't need it this turn. Sure, let's discard that second sidestep there. Then we throw in... Ah, uh, why die buff? Why die buff? Why, 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 why? That's not supposed to be on that minion. Oops. Ideally, it's not gonna matter, but whoops. There's another sidestep. This one I'm probably gonna hold in hand for a bit. Why, Ryan? You just, you just remember that you shouldn't do it. My bad. Takes me a couple times through to learn the lesson. Just, just get really lodged in there. Still, we got the kill though. Upgrade. <laughs> okay, well, in cold blood. Uh, all creatures with lead subject level two. It's Crimson Slaughter, isn't it? It's Crimson Slaughter and then put the other Crimson Slaughter back in the deck as well. Like literally, it's like Crimson Slaughter, Crimson Slaughter. That's the other one, there it is. And then we cut draw blood, put the other Crimson Slaughter back in. Sanguine Shell, God, I wanna put that in as well. Seven other draw blood. Okay, uh, rage doesn't matter to me at all. Purging a card for three blo uh, block, no, no matter. First two cards played trigger one plus times. So that means I can play Laceration and then Laceration's Ghost two times each, which means that every time the Voids uh, bleed triggers, it will increase its bleed by four. No, wait, hang on. What? It's not four. Two, four, eight. It's pretty good. Uh, when finding the void, you'll get delayed block six at the start of each fight turn. Yeah, that's this is fine. We'll go for the Death Knight first. Death Knight is by itself and punishes us for playing block cards. His damage out spike can spike suddenly later in the fight. Um, I'm not going to use any potions here. I don't really have a read for you know exactly how dangerous each of these enemies are, those kinds of things just yet. Um, so it's possible that I could get my butt completely kicked here and just not have yet known how to, uh, how to properly approach the evaluation of the difficulty of this fight. Chill of death, each time you can play a block card, you suffer two ba- What? Uh, okay, uh, I gotta double play Anemia here for the weakness. I, I just have to. Oh God. Well, that's going to be a problem. The capital P and a lowercase problem. What the heck? What the heck in the hay in the hay? Uh, yeah, that's one block card. A fair few banes here. I'm trying not to keep anything there that I don't really need and uh, not use swifts when I don't really need those either. I can leave a sidestep in hand here for any dangerous turn up coming. Definitely drop the sanguine shell that we're not gonna be using. Um, let's bleed you a bit more. Get you even more vulnerable. Okay. I mean, look, we're getting 78 damage a turn here, so it's it's not like we're having the worst time. Oh, 
just feels like it could suddenly become the worst time. However, triggering enough times, right? Just got the instant finisher with it. Okay, we've got two gems in here that really ought not be in there right now. We should uh, we should play something else. Mm, bleeped it out. Uh, look, the rage one doesn't matter at all, right? Draw blood is literally the only. Actually, I really don't want draw blood in this deck. I'm going to cut it literally just for a bleed it out. Uh, and then. God, natural 20 doesn't even need to be in here. I kind of want a block card instead of natural 20. But I have no block card instead of natural 20 I want. I foresight to all cards until the end of turn, suffer vulnerable to. Okay, so this is just like start drawing and go the hell off. Oh, sustenance. There you go. Pop sustenance in and cut the natural 20. Cidium Golem. Creatures high health and steady regeneration make it resistant to gradual damage that powers up. That makes sense. But I don't think it's a problem for us. I want to use every potion in the final fight if I have the ability here, so I'm still holding on to him. Okay. Let's go with... Double Laceration to start out the fight. I should probably keep one of the Sanguines in hand here, just because it looks like we've got a huge amount of incoming damage on turn two. And if I set this up correctly, I can have the Sanguine Shell do the double trigger, which would increase everyone's bleed a bunch. Yeah, that'll do it. Shadow, get the scent of blood out there, and then again, trigger everyone's. Hopefully we get the next sidestep next turn. Got one left in there. 18. Okay, we did get sidestep, thankfully. Oh, we also got a Call Blood. This is a really good turn. Um, let's start with purging the sustenance. Double sidestep here for full. Trigger target's bleed. Just a sec. Good lord. Uh, I mean, I want to trigger the target's bleed after all of that, right? Well, I, it, it doesn't matter, right? The order of those two doesn't matter. God, that anemia seems like such a good play, and I turned it down. I'm going to hold it for the next turn. Seven here. Alright. I'm comfortable with taking seven. Not comfortable with much more than that though, game. Just uh, giving you a little bit of a heads up here. Trigger Crimson Slaughter on the main target two times and we win. What just happened? Forty-two damage to the obsidian golem from bleed. It applied so you have vulnerable, it triggered the bleed, however, it used the non What? Draw bleed stacks. Okay, so does trigger all bleed stacks not do the damage according to the vulnerability? 
I almost want to test that right now. Yeah, it doesn't. 44? Why is it? This enemy had this enemy had 58, and then they had 46. So wait. Is it subtracting the fortitude from those? Blood from a stone suffers half damage from never mind. Never mind. I'm just I'm just a dummy. I uh, it suffers half damage from bleed. Uh At least I know now. God, this yeah, this fight would have been so much quicker without that. Get anything else we care about here? No. Nope. All right, let's go into the final fight. Sup, Void? Let's just hard buff before this combat. Okay. Oh, this should be good. Void fills us all. Whenever any good uh, conditions reduced, Void will tick them down by two rather than by one. Uh, Laceration is going to offset that for us. Yeah. Bleed now ticks up instead of down by eight. Just trying to trigger it as many times as possible just to try and increment it real quick. Get it off that start mark. Uh, okay, yeah, we'll use that one. Every sixth block card trees an additional time. I could weaken you for a bunch more turns with the anemia here. It's definitely the reasonable thing to do. Definitely what we should. I like, I like that we have like a, a growing stack in this fight here, rather than the Daughter of the Void corruption fight that we had here, uh, where we had no inevitability built into that deck and gosh, did it show. We have here, found that one easily. Let's see, double play that as well. We can, in fact, I'm going to Sustenance just to set up for a thousand cuts here. Could even burn the Sustenance to use another Bleeded out here. Just seems right. Once again, Overcharge going to the next turn, so we have three energy. Oh, that's not a bad hand. Throw a Quickness out. I may leave the Sanguine Shell in hand here at the end as well. In fact, it's quite likely I do. Use that one for the draws. Yep. I'm leaving the Sanguine Shell in hand for double trigger next turn as well. Uh, let's discard this. It'll trigger two times, triggering the enemy's bleed two times as well. But I can just thousand cuts you first. No! I got rid of the wrong card. Ultimately, it's not gonna matter, but I, I lost my slaying card. You know, the card I put in the deck so I could kill this enemy. Oh, I'm not even gonna get back to it in time. Where? <laughs> Instead, I'm just gonna have to kill with all these other cards. GG.
G, G right there. Now, I will say, as we rotate around the other characters uh, and the decks that we have not yet demonstrated, I'm also going to be playing those very likely on hard for the moment. Uh, and then moving up to impossible as I feel more confident that I know the right things to counter and exactly how to counter them. Uh, but for the moment, let's go to our card mastery here. Dueling Buckler. It's got to be Dueling Buckler. It's so good. Not necessarily in the deck that we were just running. We obviously completely ignored it, but it, it can be so good. For the moment, though. My name's Ben Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Vault of the Void. There is a playlist in the description down below with all my content on this game. Past, present, and future. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves. There is also the Steam uh, the Steam page in the description down below. If you'd just like to, I don't know, go there and wishlist the game, that'd be cool too. You'd be able to see all the information uh, that happens to come out about the game. Uh, or rather specifically about the game's upcoming release. It's got a, a nebulous time period. I'm not saying upcoming release like I know anything. It's it's like that there is uh, that is the easiest way to stay in touch. Uh, or one of the easy ways, rather, to stay in touch. The other is the Discord, but uh, uh, I, I, I think I still have that link in the description down below, but there uh, isn't necessarily a promise of any beta keys just yet. Uh, for the moment, though, hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves, and hopefully we'll see you next time.